Hey guys, Double Wide Six, and uh, today I got a little bit of time, and I figured I'd go ahead and install my new saltwater chlorinator. I have a system set up, but it's not quite as powerful as I would like it to be. So I'm going to upgrade my system from uh, this one produces about 1.3 pounds of chlorine gas a day. And this new one's going to produce three pounds of chlorine gas. So it should be a pretty easy install. We'll take the old one out and put the new one in. And uh, hopefully we can get it fired up here tonight. So I laid out where I want it to be. It's going to be about the same position as this. I've already uh, opened up my pump. And what I want to do is cut the pipe here so I can remove the old system. All right, found my saw. So I gotta leave about five inches before the flow switch. Actually six inches. For the second cut, I'm just gonna rough cut the pipe about here and then I'll fine tune it and figure out exactly where it needs to be. I just want to make sure I don't drop this thing. Okay guys, I have my first pipe prepped, and uh, what you need to know is that this unit has a flow switch, and you can see there's an arrow, so it's directional, and we need it to go this way, and uh, what what the, the flow switch actually does is it prevents your salt water cell from burning up in the event that the pump turns off and there's no water inside the cell. So to do this, first thing we're going to do is we're going to prime up our pipe. Now that the flow switch is in place, the next thing we need to do is we're going to put this union on here, but we need a small piece of 2 inch PVC so that these two can join together. So I already primed them. The last part of the side is this screw on union piece that'll connect to the cell so we'll glue this right on here don't forget this blue collar needs to be on here so that'll go that way so now I'm gonna measure across this cell and it's exactly 12 and 3 eighths. So I'm going to transfer that mark up top. So from this flat edge all the way over to the other flat edge, I'm going to need at least 12 and 3 eighths. Okay, I'm taking a look at the right hand side union connection and there's a little lip here that's a half inch. So I need to account for that. 
So instead of that line being at 12 and 3 eighths, I'm going to have to add a half inch to that, which I think is 12 and 7 eighths. Or what I'm going to do is just measure to the right half an inch. And then we'll cut that off there and we'll get it glued in place. Alright guys, we're on the uh, second side union here, and I have the collar in place, I got the pipes primed, so all we have to do is glue this. You just don't want to forget to put that collar on there. So if you do, it might end up costing you some money. So we'll glue these up, and... That should hopefully take care of this. There's a little bit of flex in these pipes if it's off a little. But I took my time and Measured it. Should be good. So the direction, this blue side is going to go back here towards your flow switch. That looks like a nice fit. Just want to make sure that you uh, don't cross thread it. I don't see any gaskets on this thing or O-rings here, so th these just get snugged up. Alright guys, I got the uh, unit mounted and it's pretty simple to do. They give you a French cleat and the back of this is set up just to interlock in there. The unit's quite heavy. And the front just sits here loose. And to open the unit, you pull down like that. So the ground wire just comes up from the pump and the pool ground or earth. And it's they have a lug right here on the side. Now we're going to connect the unit to the timer box. And I have a, well, it's actually an outdoor grommet and we're going to use this um, to connect to the box so first thing I do is put on this weatherproof actually I got to put this end on so we'll slip that on and then there's this uh, weatherproof plug this should slip over your wire insulation there we go and then that comes up this way this will go on here okay I got this grommet hooked up so this should come right into the box just like this and we'll secure that to the box with the nut The excess wire on here, I'm going to zip tie. So that'll take care of that. And now I gotta hook this up to the timer. And you have two lines and two loads here. I'm pretty sure these wires, the white and black, um, I'm gonna check it, but I think they should go to the loads and the ground should go to the ground. Let me just look that up. So they have good instructions here that are in English and easy to read. So according to this, load one would be black, load two would be white, and uh, the ground would be green. So 
I'm just going to hook that up. I think on this timer, it's number two and number four. It should be the same as your pump because that's your load on here, and the pump is 242. So uh, I'm just going to connect all these wires in here and set that up. The flow switch has a wire on it. Kind of looks like a uh, telephone line. And this wire connects up underneath our unit. So I'm just going to snap that in. And there's going to be a wire from the cell. Oh, and I also found uh, a little baggie that has some O-rings. They're pretty nice. They're uh, silicone O-rings that go on these unions. So we need to put those on, do a little bit of zip tying, and uh, i got to prime the pump, and I think we got this hooked up. All right, guys, I got the uh, pump up and running. And uh, I turned on the unit. I let the pump run for about 15 minutes. Took a little while for air bubbles to get out of the sand filter. I cleaned up the two lines. One goes to the cell, one goes to the flow switch. And if you look at this unit, it's pretty neat. It shows you that it's producing chlorine here. You can see it's a, the salt water turns into chlorine when it runs through these titanium plates. And you can see how it's cloudy there. That means that there's chlorine in that water. And that'll go into the pool, kill any uh, contaminants, and then it turns back into salt water. It's not salt water like uh, the ocean. The ocean has about, I think it's like 35,000 parts per million salt in the ocean. And this is about 3,000 or 3,500 is what's required for this unit. And I don't think I mentioned it. This thing's a circuit pool. And uh, this is what the unit looks like. So you can see it's uh, running at 75%. So I'm just going to let it run and I'll test my free chlorine for a couple days in a row and we'll see what it's producing and I want to try and keep that I like keeping mine at about six or seven parts per million but uh, the, the thinking here is uh, replace that unit and get a more powerful unit and I won't have to supplement it all with uh, liquid chlorine um, which I had to with that unit once in a while so that'll pretty much reduce the uh, chemicals and you could also run this unit with a uh, pH pump so if you wanted to increase your pH or lower it um, you could use your pH pump if you wanted so we are I guess all automated I don't have any leaks and things are looking good I will make a future video on this unit and if you're interested in a unit like this I'll link it down in the description. Alright guys, thanks for watching and happy swimming.